What is going on? Bill Wise Guy here, and I just want to preface this by saying I've tried to record this like 10, probably like 15 times now, so um, I'm getting a little frustrated and I just can't get the words out of my mouth properly. So I'm not going to stop recording this one, and so I'm really sorry if I make any mistakes, um, but just know I've really tried to put my heart into this video, and for some whatever reason, you know, the nerves have gotten the better of me, and I just literally cannot seem to get this video out. So um, here it is anyway. I think it's a really important, really amazing thing. Um, that is the .NET Core for Linux is now out and released. Uh, we also have it for, obviously, Windows um, and Mac and now Docker. Um, and there are also some other downloads, which I haven't even clicked into here, but um, let's just go have a quick look. Um, so these are all of the .NET Core installations and you can get the daily builds and whatever else through here. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, so what we're focused on here is uh, Linux and specifically I'm running on Ubuntu 16.04. So let's go ahead and we'll install for Ubuntu 16.04. So what you're gonna do is you're coming to come here and you're gonna pick the right install for your distribution number. Uh, in my case, I am running on Ubuntu 16.04. Do not make do not make the mistake that I did originally of installing for Ubuntu 14.04 because uh, things go really really badly and nothing works and you know it's a little frustrating trying to figure out why you're getting all these sorts of errors and stuff when you run your applications. Um, so go ahead and make sure you choose the right one. So what you're going to do is you're going to basically open up a terminal. Um, and I've already got it installed, but I'll just copy and paste the commands in here in the orders that you need them So first thing is you're gonna run this uh, you're gonna run the uh, aptitudes. You're gonna add the repository to your um, To your list to your sources list in there So you're just gonna uh, you know control shift V that into there and uh, I'm not gonna actually run that and then what you're gonna do is you're going to add their key into your uh, into your apt key advanced uh, thing into your key serve so you're just gonna add that into there just like that and then finally, you're going to run sudo apt get update, which I would run, but it'll just take forever anyway. Uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to run sudo apt get install the .NET and then the current build, which is now released. Um, and it says to do to .NET Core uh, on Ubuntu Linux and then simply use apt get. All right. So once you've got that all installed, and that'll take you about 12 to 13 minutes, depending on your internet connection. Some people it might take a couple of seconds. I don't know. It all depends on your internet connection. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to navigate over to a little directory. So in my case, I'm going to go to my documents and I've got this folder that I've already created here. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up a terminal in the location that we're currently working in. Now, .NET has a few things on Linux that uh, you can automatically access from the terminal, but let's go ahead and make sure that our compiler is actually working. So what we're going to do is we're going to say .NET new and all we're going to do is hit enter now as you can see we've produced a new project that says create a new c sharp project in home reverse inverse documents blah 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 and as you can see we've got a program.c sharp and a project.json now uh, .NET on Linux currently supports two languages inside the CLR, and that is uh, C Sharp and Visual Basic. Uh, for everything that we're going to be doing, and we might do some future videos on, you know, web development in Linux in in .NET or whatever, um, we're going to be using C Sharp. I don't know Visual Basic, uh, and I'm honestly not a massive fan of it. Uh, I'm sure there are some people out there. It's just a personal preference of mine. I prefer curly braces. I'm in the C world of things, and that's just the way I, I do things, I guess. Um, so the next thing that you might want to get is you might want to get Visual Studio Code. So um, as you can see here, I have VS Code. It's pretty nice. It's a little cut down version. There's some some rust stuff that uh, I was kind of playing with, which is MIO. We might do a little tutorial on MIO, but um, what you actually can do is you can go open folder and you can pick the folder which you're working in. So let's go ahead and do that. And um, in our case, we are going to go to documents dnxz and we're just going to open this folder here and uh just give it one second that's a little bit of a lag that i found is that it has a little bit of a uh, lag time from reading from the file system but it's not too bad especially it's always the same it's generally always the same doesn't matter what the project size actually is um so as you can see here um we've got some we've got a basic c sharp application uh, this is not a hello world tutorial if you haven't done your hello world tutorial for c sharp I suggest that you go and do that first before you come back and start, uh, you know, following this on Linux. 
Um, so you've got your console.write line, all that good stuff. As you can see, it's just a normal, basic, basic application. So let's go back to our terminal. Now, there are a few commands you need to run to actually get your C Sharp application running on Linux. The first one is once you've actually got your code uh, and everything inside your project.json, which we won't be going into on this tutorial, but suffice to say that what is in the project.json is basically um, like running NuGet in Visual Studio. It's kind of like your NuGet package manager. Uh, where you put all of your dependencies and if they need to be downloaded from npm then they will be downloaded from npm the command to do that instead of running npm restore is .net restore so we'll just run .net restore right now and you have to run .net restore uh, in order for your program to actually be built and compiled uh, as it generates this project.lock.json file here without that the compiler will simply refuse to compile and it will go ahead and tell you to go away and actually um, to restore everything uh, and then to generate that project.lock.json file okay so once you've done that what you're going to do is you're going to hit .net uh, we'll type .net and then you're just going to type .net run and what's going to happen is it's going to compile our application for .net core app uh, version equals 1.0 which is the current build of .NET on Linux <clears throat> or I should say .NET Core really you get compilation succeeded and then we get the output of our application so that's all nice and well now for those of you who are thinking is this a viable way of developing like can I develop on .NET Linux yet what to what extent exactly is the whole thing you know kind of set up well um, believe it or not, the uh, the ASP.NET web framework has been completely ported over to Linux uh, and to Mac and I think to uh, thing. We have what's called the Kestro server, which is the development server on Linux. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that quickly. So uh, firstly, you always want to make sure that you always just delete everything in your folder. And in fact, um, I had some issues with creating some things in the same folder. It seemed to throw some weird segmentation faults. So I'm just going to make a new folder called uh, website, just like that. And I'm going to CD to that. So we'll say website. All right, cool. Reset and we'll clear the terminal. So what you're going to do to create a new website is you're going to say .NET new. And then you're going to put this dash T flag here, which means type. And then you can type in web. And as you can see, we've created a new C Sharp project. Now, these websites are interoperable between Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever else. These are the exact same structure that you would expect to find uh, on your on your Linux, sorry, on your Windows Visual Studio when you make a new MVC5 application. So these are basically ASP.NET MVC5 applications. I don't know if you can create a web forms uh, application. I think web forms is dead anyway. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe that it's been killed off. Uh, and I'm, I'm personally in favor of it being killed off anyway. So as you can see, we've got a web.config here. As you can see, it's just a very basic uh, kind of web config. We've got the uh, ASP.NET handler there for ASP.NET Core. Uh, there's not really much to it. Um, there's some basic config there. It's definitely not the same config as a... Um, like it's, it'll definitely run in IS, but it's not the same sort of config that you would get from Visual Studio from generating a massive thing, I don't think. Although I've never generated an MVC5 application, I'm still working in MVC4. All right, so once we've done that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead, and this is where the .NET restore becomes really important. So we're gonna say .NET restore, you can hit enter. And what's gonna happen is it is going to go ahead and it's gonna re, uh, it's gonna restore all of your ASP.NET applications, sorry, all of your ASP.NET libraries um, so that it can be basically uh, run. So it's gonna restore Kestros uh, and all of the MVC libraries and everything that you need to uh, successfully build and run a ASP.NET application. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pause the video while this is recording, uh, sorry, while this is downloading and uh, as soon as it's finished downloading, uh, we're going to come back and we're going to have a look at actually running the website. Alright guys, so we're back now. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've actually generated uh, the website and now I've actually restored all the packages. So just quickly, let's go through the packages that it's gone and restored uh, from NuGet Package Manager. Um, it's restored the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core Razor Tools. Um, the uh, server IES integration tools, uh, entity framework, um, secret manager, I've never actually heard of that, some uh, co-generation stuff. So that's all pretty cool. Um, and that's just gone ahead and done it for us. As you can see, it took a little bit of time, 52, uh, 529, sorry, 52,991 milliseconds. So we'll go ahead and clear the console here. And we'll say .NET run. And what it's gonna go ahead and do is it's just gonna compile our website for .NET. And this will take a little bit longer time than it normally does, only about five seconds. 
There you go. All right, so what, what's now happening is that it started up our uh, Kestro server, uh, which is now listening on localhost on port 5000. So let's go ahead and let's look at the website that it's actually generated. And if you're an ASP.NET MVC developer, you'll notice a very strong familiarity between the previous websites that's been generated by um, the boilerplate and the current generated website here. So as you can see, it's very, very similar. Um, in fact, if it's if it's you're used to the MVC5 stuff that it generates, um, this is the exact same website that it generates pretty much, um, except for the fact that it says ASP.NET Core, uh, Windows, OS X, and Linux. That's all I actually have time for, guys, um, and that's all I want to show you guys in this video. Um, I would like to thank you guys very much for watching and I guess for putting up with my things. Um, stay tuned for some more Rust videos. And I'll definitely be doing some C-sharp on Linux now that the .NET Core is available to us. So thank you all for watching. Um, like, comment, rate, subscribe, all that stuff. It really helps when you share my videos. Um, and I love you all very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.